So I'm now going to hand over. I'm going to hand over. Oh, it's a tough job. Somebody has to do it. I'm going to hand over to Erkan, who's specifically requested to introduce our yeah. low and be known speaker. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just start his uh, presentation. Um, so, for, so for me, having Narish presented to you guys um, his area of expertise, and remember that the context of this part of the, the session is to add value to your understanding, to raise his profile as someone that you could you know, draw on his expertise, but also listen to who the man that is in front of us. And I want to share, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cry in a minute, I'll tell you. I mean, you are probably one of the most beautiful human beings I've ever met. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Seriously. Well, and obviously, <laughs> obviously behind Claudia, behind the <laughs> and, and I'll tell you why, because when I, when I first started working with Marish, uh, this might be a bit embarrassing for him, he was, I was introduced to him by one of his clients, and he couldn't have been further away from the guy he is today for me. Right? And over that period, I mean, I'm surprised he get chucked out within the first couple of months. You know, <laughs> I nearly did a couple of months. Um, but some, some, some penny dropped for marriage in who I was and who he was and how we could support each other. Ever since then, it's been five years now, so we're just celebrating our anniversary, we've never had a row, we've never had disagreement. He has been a constant support of me personally, helped me to help his clients. He's made a difference to hundreds of people's lives within our relationship. He is, our, he is our finance director for big collaboration. He supported me and Jill in every step of the way. So when, when you meet this guy, I want you to know that when I first started talking about this notion of getting great people and making this magic happen, he was probably the first person that heard it and went, yes. So for me, he's almost like our big daddy, our support, our mentor, my partner in crime. I love him to bits and with that, Honour, I want to rec I want to introduce you to Nash Hamilton, my friend and fellow collaborator. Oh, you can do that. Now. You want me to do it for you? Yeah, just put the video. Well, a bit of humour to start. Right, hand over to Nash. Just press. Yeah. Oh. Hey, just press it. What's that to my own? It's the comedy. How do we test this? First rail coming up, guys. Five years after I'm going to Anyway, Nash is a really good bloke, everyone. <laughs> no, 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 I want to do the video. You could roleplay it. I have no idea what that's going to Detective Dance. Come on, I've made my mistake. Parking's an absolute nightmare around here, isn't it? Have to reverse into the tiniest of spaces. So, I managed it. I mean, parking's not exactly brain surgery, is it? <laughs> and I should know. Why is that? You're a doctor. Careful. I'm a doctor. I'm a brain surgeon. Big difference. Big difference. Yeah, I actually know a joke about this. What's the difference between a doctor and a brain surgeon? One's not exactly brain surgery. The other is brain surgery. <laughs> So, uh, what do you guys do? I'm an accountant. Oh, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> I could do with an accountant. Pulling in those tax forms can get really confusing, can't it? Still, it's not exactly brain surgery, is it? <laughs> I mean, brain surgery, believe me, is very complex. Are you an accountant too? Uh, no, I work for charity. Oh, that's a very selfless job, isn't it? I really admire you. I don't think I could ever do what you do. 
I say that because it's emotionally draining, not because it's hard. I mean, it's not exactly brain surgery, is it? Which, as a brain surgeon, is what I do. I know, I hate a drink. Brain surgeon, you know. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned it. <laughs> oh, Jeff, so you late to the space centre. Uh, <laughs> 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 Has he met Lionel? Uh, no, hello, Lionel. So, Jeff, how have you earned a crust? Uh, oh, I'm a scientist. I, I work mainly with rockets. It's, <laughs> um, it's pretty tough work. Uh, what do you do? Why, well, I don't mean to boast, but uh, I'm a brain surgeon. <laughs> Right, while I can scan up um, setting up, the reason I chose that is it's funny how people assume. You know, you just assume based on someone telling you they're a certain profession what they're like. Mm -hmm. and, and my passion, if you ask me, is actually to dispel the notion that accountants just do one thing. And I think, um, you know, think changes are coming and things are changing very, very fast for all of us in, a, in our professions. And you can't afford to stand still. Um, you know, and, and the days when an accountant just used to do your books or you know, fill in your tax returns, that was fine, and you, you can still get those types of accountants. But I think for growing businesses, um, that's where you, you need to think about, um, you know, other options. Um, and I guess uh, the main changes in our industry, um, if you look at that, the, the main one is deregulation. So now, a lot of you, if you're, if you're self-employed, you can do your own taxes, you can do your own limited company accounts, and things are really changing where you don't need the accountant to do the same things that he was doing 10 years ago. Um, it's simpler to do stuff, so you can do your own filings, you can, um, you know, you can work out your own taxes. So there's a lot of changes that, that, that is happening. Outsourcing, you know, you can outsource a lot of the, the stuff you do, and, and certainly a lot of progressive accountants will outsource the compliance part of their business so they can offer more value added um, to the value added uh, you know to their clients um, and the competition obviously there's there's lots of accountants I don't know if you know is not a regulated term so anyone can set up as an accountant or, or a tax advisor um, unlike calling yourself a solicitor um, and therefore it means that the levels at which you get of an accountant can differ between a glorified bookkeeper that just does your books, um, or a bookkeeper that's reasonably good but just doesn't know all the aspects of, of tax and how to advise you on growing a business. So, um, right, okay. You can obviously see I didn't do these slides. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that to me means, you know, a lot of accountants, and um, whereas uh, there is, um, I'm sure, I'm sure um, you'll agree with me, a lot of accountants tend to hide behind their certification and their qualification, and they seem to think that, you know, they, they know more than you, or they need to, um, you know, uh, certainly when I get a lot of prospects, they say, look, our old accountant used to talk down to me. You know, well, why would you do that? You should be working together as a partnership to build the business. Um, and, you know, to me, having letters behind your name doesn't make you work anymore. In fact, it's the entrepreneurs that run the businesses that are the real champions, um, not just because we've studied and, you know, we, we know the stuff. Um, so it's all about what kind of accountant you want, you know, and I've, I've tried to do this in a way um, to suggest that, look, at, at, at a first level, you may just need bookkeepers to do your books. Um, but they may not have very good tax knowledge um, to drive the business forward. Um, uh, and then you get accountants who are just compliance officers. They will just do year-end accounts. And if at all, you, you'll uh, see them. You might even um, not see them at all, and they may just give you the stuff um, through email or, or uh, post. Um, and that to me, uh, and we spoke about this earlier in our finance meeting, that to me 
um, is, is not the way that an accountant should be advising you because where's the advisory part of that? You know, where's, where's the sounding board where they're actually chatting to you about uh, things that can make a difference? Because um, what my clients say is that sounding board is the key to the business. It's about um, raising more questions than answers. It's about finding out whether the business is going in the direction that you want it going. Um, and then the level three, uh, then you'll get the accountants with tax buyers. So the, the thing about that is we all expect accountants to help us with tax. You know, it's, it's, um, it's natural that you expect them to um, know the tax stuff and save you tax. That's, that's the perception uh, of, of most businesses. Uh, first and foremost is there is to protect you from tax risk. Um, and this, to me, is like the level that um, is, is a must. You know, protecting you from risk um, is what they should be doing so that you're free to not worry about that and, and, and carry on with your business. Um, because as um, uh, accountants that work in tax will tell you, it is a minefield now out there. You're late on the smallest thing, you get, you get a penalty. You're, you're late with payment, you get interest. And, and that's just getting worse and worse. Um, so the accountant should be in the driving seat making sure that you don't have to worry about those things. Um, second to that is obviously tax planning, um, you know, actually advising you how to set up a company, how not to, um, uh, you know, take money out in certain ways or, or um, you know, wh whatever is the most advantageous way for you. Um, and the third is the much more uh, creative part, which is the uh, bespoke tax planning, and I put tax boutiques there because a lot of accountants won't get involved in, in, in the kind of tax planning I'm talking about, the kind that you've heard in the, in the papers that Starbucks have got up to and all these kind of Google have got up to because it really is at the fine end of tax planning. Um, but again, I think, and my, my personal opinion, maybe not my professional opinion, is that you guys need to make that decision informed by your accountants. Your accountants should tell you these things exist, and if you want to go for these things, then of course you're the entrepreneurs that, that will say, look, I'm, I'm willing to take a gamble. Um, because it is a gamble. You know, the tax man is coming down hard on all this tax planning stuff, um, the creative stuff, and um, you know, you, you really are rolling the, the dice. Um, <coughs> One thing about tax uh, planning is that the whole area now is covered with penalties, and what that means is if you um, if you save yourself some tax and it works, great. But if the tax man comes back to you and finds that you've done something wrong, then it's um, you pay back the tax and up to a hundred percent in penalties. So it really is like rolling the dice because it's double or nothing. Um, okay. The superior accountant, what I do. Okay, so, um, you know, I, I think where we come in is we're very much um, in, in the domain of acting as business advisors um, and finance directors. That's, that's what we do for most of our clients. And even the smaller clients where, um, you know, I'm not officially on their board as an FD, uh, I always think of myself as an FD for my clients, and that really keeps me sharp. It keeps me asking them the right questions about driving the business forward. Um, so I think it's more of a mindset than knowing certain things, um, because you know that's what clients want from you. They want that constant uh, sounding board to um, to to get the advice whether their business is running in the right direction. Um, so for a lot of clients, you know, we'd be part of the inner circle. Um, as I said, for, for my larger clients, I'm on the board of directors. We attend board meetings. Um, and that's a really privileged position because where they don't have a full-time FD, but they say to us, look, we'd like you in the team and coming in monthly, um, you know, talking to operations directors, sales directors, and the CEO. And, and you're the guy that everyone looks to when it comes to finance. Um, I treat that as a real privilege. Um, yeah, and as I said, you know, very often it involves a seat, seat on the board, um, and, it, and we're then seen as vital to the future of the business. I think someone earlier talked about, um, you know, actually changing the way of the future. 
And I think um, the best compliments I get from clients is where they say things like, we couldn't see the business functioning without you. And, and that's really f um, at the other end of the scale from an accountant that just does your books once a year, because that's just, you know, that's just doing the books. Um, okay, so what sets us apart? Well, our, our vision, uh, and it took us a long time to articula articulate this um, in, in print, um, is actually changing our world by empowering the entrepreneur. Um, quite grand, I know, um, but you know, I really believe that when you empower entrepreneurs to be the best they can be, you can really change things in the domain of their world. Um, and that's what we like to think we do. Um, we're always looking at new ways to introduce um, people to um, the businesses that we work with. Uh, and collaboration is a key part of that. So what sets us apart? Well, our journey, as, as Erkan mentioned, you know, we've been five years through uh, coaching, um, and that's really a journey which, um, when we started, as I said, we didn't know what coaches were about. Um, I actually thought he was, he was coming in to mix some of our clients, um, <laughs> but it couldn't be far from the truth. And now we're actually meeting with other accountants, and Jazz is an example, um, and actually sharing ideas. Um, and that's how, how far you, you come when you open up your mind to the possibility of collaborating with, with um, other people. Um, and I don't think, you know, we feel threatened, we don't feel, you know, we feel we're sharing information. Um, and um, I think that, that, that's good for everyone, you know, because we're both improving ourselves and developing. Um, stepping outside comfort zone, this would be an example. It's not, it's not comfortable for me, but you know, um, that, that's really important. And one thing coaching teaches you is by stepping outside of your comfort zone every single day, that's how you improve as a person. Um, and collaboration, as I mentioned earlier, strategic alliances and collaborations uh, is key to my business because we're always looking to introduce our clients to other people that can help. Um, and, and one example, as, as Erkan said, is I always, um, I don't necessarily mention uh, business coaches I've used to my clients, but they simply ask me how we've changed so much, and the dialogue automatically leads to me recommending um, the, 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 um, the coaches within B Collaboration. And yeah, as I said, working with business coaches, that, that's been fundamental for us in, in really changing the psyche and what we say and what we do for clients in the way we think. Um, and I can't stress enough that if you haven't um, got a business coach, uh, the benefits of doing so, particularly now, because there are so many government incentives uh, that will give you, for very uh, little investment, will give you access to business coaching. Um, so it, it's, it's really an ideal time. Um, and yeah, the, the other thing that really sets us apart is I think we're always looking forward. It's never of interest to me what you've done in the past. What interests me is where you're going um, forward. Um, and certainly in my FD role, when I work for larger companies, you see that psyche in entrepreneurs that run larger businesses they're always interested in two-year, five-year exit route. Um, you know, what's happened has happened, and they pat themselves on the back and move forward. So um, it's really important that your finance advisor also has that same kind of um, psyche. Um, and I've said there, you know, accountability, but with a can-do positive uh, approach. You know, I'm very direct with my clients. Um, uh, I tell them exactly the way, the way it is and the way I think, um, but always with the caveat that, look, you can do it, um, and, and putting a very positive slant on it. Um, because accountants that just earn their fees for the sake of earning fees and having clients that aren't going anywhere are not going to earn fees for long. So the important thing is, you know, working with the clients, making a difference, and then both of you uh, benefit. Okay. Right, so how do we approach things? Um, I've said that, you know, we always start with a needs analysis. We always look at what the client needs, wh where they want to be um, going forward. Um, a lot of the time I've said to clients, you know, think about, um, 
you know, how you want to exit the business even before you um, get deep into the business so that you've got a, a good flight path to follow. Um, and brainstorming in regular finance meetings. So like I said, as, as you probably guessed, uh, we, we don't just meet our clients once a year. It's important we meet them regularly. Um, and we're always talking about, you know, wh where is the business going? Where is it at? Why is it not achieving um, the targets that you've set? Uh, the FD service I've spoken about um, and the essential reporting, things like business plans, budgets, cash flows, KPIs, uh, benchmarking and dashboard information. All of these things are critical to a business so that you've got your finger on the pulse without necessarily having to keep detail. Um, what's really important is that you can, um, you know, have these key key figures that so you know what the key drivers are, uh, but in the background someone else is preparing that information for you. And that's really key to driving a business forward. Yeah, and then one of the, the, the comments I like is it's not about being the best accountants because who's to say who's the best because different customers want different things. Um, so it's not about being the best accountants, it's just about being the best we can be. Um, and that comes from personal development, it comes from constantly wanting to learn, um, and it comes from you know really thinking about the people that you serve your customers. Um, and that's what we try and do, always thinking about what, what they want, not just what we've got to offer. Um, I know it's a cliche, but that really is the way I think. I'm always thinking about, you know, what can I do for my clients to, to help them? Um, and it may not necessarily be financial. I've gone in some meetings without any finances, um, and, um, you know, we've just had a great meeting talking about the business. So it doesn't need to be, you know, just talking about accounts and what you've what you've done in the last quarter. Okay, so that was questions. <laughs> what's, uh, what's your niche? Um, I think, as I said, uh, our, our niche is, um, we're not a compliance-based business, so we're not like, we don't do like hundreds and hundreds of tax returns and just churn them out. Um, I think the niche, is, for me, is helping entrepreneurs grow. Um, and really looking at your business and is it scalable, where do you want to take it? Um, and as I said, I, because of the benefit I get from sitting on the board of some of the clients that are multi-million pound companies, I can see that um, great businesses are not defined by what you do, they're defined by the mindset of the business owner and that's, that's what really drives us. Because so, so any type of business in any, in any sector? Yeah, exactly. We, we don't like heavily compliant businesses, any solicitors in the room. <laughs> so, you know, like solicitors and things, because the, the risk involved in doing those kind of uh, accounts is far more than the, the, the benefits you normally get. Because the law society are really strict, really strict. Um, so, um, but for me, it's about, you know, it's about mindset of the, the kind of businesses that really want to grow, you know. And, and it doesn't mean, you know, being multi-million, it means, you could have a client that starts at zero and gets to 200,000 and that's a great thing. You know, it's, it's great because, you know, you, you, you're employing others, you're providing to a community, you know, and you've taken that step of breaking away from employment and really doing what you love. And that, that's, what, that's what's so great. Charge for an hour. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, question. Where did the word Allens? Where did you come from? Around? Oh, my uh, previous partner was called uh, Punaya Siva Palan. Oh, and that's part of that mouthful. So he shortened it to Allens. He's a Sri Lankan chap, and he shortened it to Allens to make it easier for the service and public. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm gonna, I'm, I want to drive this a little bit more, if I, if I may. Um, no. Yes. <laughs> so, um, I, what, what, I, this is, because again, this, those of you who are in the introduction, everybody's seen the introduction, I assume now, is this is not about what somebody does for a profession. That really excites us about bringing people into the community. Who here can sell his multinational just accountancy, right? Yeah. 
you, you can get that straight off the bat, right? Um, one of the things that, in, 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 the, in the term of the context of a collaborative community, um, we, we, again, our relationship is one of coaching and supporting that business. So I want to share a bit more about that and how being part of that and how it's been developing one year as a firm, but also the benefits it's had to your clients and how drawing off this community has benefited you. Because obviously you've been in before it was yeah. a collaboration, right? Uh, is anyone interested in that before I kind of carry on? Yeah. 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 Because I think, I think that's, that, it's about, so we've got the idea about well, the numbers, how they empower entrepreneurs, how they can help them. In the terms of one main principles we use within big collaboration is, is be, do, have. I.e. context, <laughs> context, action, Results, right? And now, I know, I know, don't be saying I'm aware, I'm aware, I'm aware, right? Um, but the idea is actually when you, when you have a strong contextual understanding of what you stand for, what your business is about, what your endeavour is, right? So you, it's about how do you take the actions that best fulfil on you producing these, these breakthrough results. Now, would you say in the last five years, your business, your organisation achieved breakthrough results compared to where you were? Definitely. Right? So if you want to know where you're going to be in two or three years' time, there's a really easy way to work it out. The next two or three years are going to probably be pretty much thereabouts the same as the last two or three years. That should be a little bit upsetting in this, in this area, right? Because if something doesn't change fundamentally in your mindset, your actions won't change. Do you know one definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, trying to get... The result, right? That, 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 that is going, Give me the <laughs> so, 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 in terms of this collaboration, I want to kind of demonstrate a principle, and then see how that could add value in your in your understanding of what's going on in this in this community, right? So, as we work on these, as we work on context, Narish started to do things that he'd never done before. Now, I remember during a couple of things we said earlier on. I said, before you know it, you'll be speaking in front of people. Oh, thanks. Do you remember that? And he looked at me with that look, like terror. Who here wants to? Who here is terrified at the opportunist? You probably want to put your hand up. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> who here loves talking in front of people? That works out. It's like the rest of you, right? <laughs> right, get it? So that is a breakthrough result, right? <laughs> Off the back of that, now he's joined a business networking group. Never done it before, yes? Mm. And out of that, you've been there, what, two? Two or three years. Two or three years, you've played finance role there, you, you've, you've made massive impact in that area. Now that, he speaks in front of people every week now, or every other week, right? Today, I promise you, whatever you think of Narish's uh, presentation there, whether you think he was brilliant, or whatever, whatever opinion you have, this is not normal for him. He's pushing his boundaries, why? Because there's a commitment. Commitment is to empower entrepreneurs to support collaboration. Get that? <coughs> that makes sense, right? And at the back of that, we're, we're now producing. Can I just do black, red, blue? Mm -hmm. yeah, can add, do you want to explain red, blue? No. Okay. Yeah, you copy it out. No. <laughs> so, one of the things that I always wanted is a bit who here is actually a business owner? Great. So, we've got quite a few people. So, when you get your um, side to side, it would say your why <coughs> or your purpose <coughs> or your context. I know my writing is terrible. You start taking actions, right? And those actions generally are going to be new if they're if they're operating from a different context. But one of the outcomes here, one of the outcomes, one of the results you get in business is what? Money, right? You get a money outcome. That's the result, right? Quite often we think as owners that running a business and making money is what a business exists for. So there's more to it than that. There's the money, there's the uh, the the benefit of making a difference to people's lives. Your creativity, being the best you can be, the challenges make you someone new, right? All this makes sense. Narish and I are working on something called Red Blue. And we've been talking about it for, in one way or another, for a while, right? So I want you to think about how many things are you talking about for a while that you haven't made happen yet? Yeah? Do you get what I'm getting at? There'll be some things you've been talking about mouthing off, thinking about, resigned about maybe, oh yeah, because if I really, yeah? You got, have you got something that you'd love to do that would really make a difference to your projects, your business, 
the organisation of some benefit that has been dormant in here or hasn't really had the opportunity to that environment for those seeds to take root. Have you all got something? Right? So we've been we've been working together solidly for five years, right? And there's been something that we've been discussing and discussing and discussing. We've called it red blue. Do you know why? Does anyone know where well, I guess? Matrix. Matrix, right? <laughs> Everyone's seen the matrix? <laughs> Everyone seen the matrix, right? So you take the red pill and you take a journey of discovery, who knows where you end up, okay, blue pill, we'll go back to everything you know. So in big collaboration, we say that to you. Red pill, blue pill, choose. <laughs> what? How many times have we done that? We've done it in our coaching all the time, one of his favorite films, right? Red, blue, choose. So if you as a guest here tonight are gonna go back to the red pill, go back to everything you know, we love you, we send you on your way, good luck. If you want to take the blue pill, the red pill, <laughs> <laughs> What's that about? I'm, like, I'm, off, I'm always like this. I'm not right. And yeah, I'm here, right? Yeah. How often do we think we're not good enough? And yet we don't give, don't give up. Just keep going, right? So Nourish and I want to help business owners have a transformational experience in their business. So they view their business in a way that they've never viewed it. They take action in a way they've never taken. Gives them prime momentum and action processes to produce results that they never would have produced before. Right? That's transformative. Right? But also, this is the nice bit. We do the work on context. That's my genius. That is my genius, context. Right? Then we pin people down with something called radar. Right? Radar is all about management and process and making sure you implement over time. You could call it a structure for fulfillment. How do you... You want to get fit. You want to be X amount of pounds or stones by this date, but you're here now and you've got to do a certain amount of this stuff to get the result, yes? Everyone knows we've got to do, take some action, right? So we manage the action within something called radar. And at the moment, we're working on uh, visual displays of outcomes. And Nash alluded to as radar. Bench, uh, benchmarking. Uh, benchmarking and oh, dashboards. Yeah. <laughs> Giving business owners tools that they can look at that are not big spreadsheets, but actually visual displays that they can play around with, they can model, so they can see what their business might be in one, two, five, ten years' time. So they can start to speculate. Because what's important to an entrepreneur? Vision. If you can see it, you can believe it. If you can see it, and you can see how it could turn out, then you can take the actions now, because you can only take action now, right? You can't take action yesterday, and you can't take action tomorrow. You can only take action now. You can plan action tomorrow, but you can't take action tomorrow. Make sense? That's where action lives, in the now. So a powerful concept, driven by clear, defined actions over time, produces breakthrough results. What we're saying about this is this will produce a power loop between the skill set. Now, how many of you remember the conversation about left brain, right brain? They work very differently, don't they? Those of you who know who've seen the inspired stuff, right? So the left brain wants detail, wants focus, wants mm -hmm. to tell me what you're gonna do, when you're gonna do it, yeah? Who are those people in this room? Who are kind of driven towards that, yeah? Give me the detail, tell me what's next. Oh no, what's that? Who are Forward, past, tell me the planning. Who are the visionaries, the right brain stuff? You can't pin these people down. When are you gonna get it done, Glenn? Well, we'll get it done soon. How are you gonna get it done? Well, I don't know, we'll work it out on the way. Yeah? Who works with someone like that? Drives you crazy, yeah? Those left brainers <laughs> drive the right brainers crazy, right? Now, this is where the breakthrough is. My whole life, I looked at accountants as boring, talk down to you, and provide little or no value, or basically jumped up compliance officers for the tax man. That's the camera. <laughs> you get that? Now, this is the thing I want you to think about. What complementary skill set in this community, whether we're in this room or not, imagine those of our guests here, the people in this room, there's probably another four lots of this room yeah. in our community, and then there's others who are friends of a collaboration. Can you align with that can strengthen your proposition and actually make it better than it ever could have been? Do you get that? I am not naturally drawn to accountants. I used to hate them. As an entrepreneur, who here is an entrepreneur who's had to work with accountants? 
You're talking about the vision and the future, and they're going, but you're going to change the world with my product. And you're talking about rubbish. But the counselor's thinking, these entrepreneurs, they don't know anything. You know? They've got plenty of people to fall in. And everybody's seeing things from their own view. So what I'm sharing here today, and why Narish is here, is not just talking about accountancy. It's talking about the principles of collaborating. I had to transform to be able to be with this guy. You had to transform to be with this guy, right? We're not a natural fit. This isn't a natural fit. It looks natural now, probably. But we've worked on it. And now, We've birthed big collaboration out of it, and we've birthed a whole business centered around providing entrepreneurs with all the tools they need to develop their businesses and achieve their dreams. Now, is that something that's worth getting out of bed for? It is. And we've been doing it for five years, and we're now trialing two clients on Red Blue. Milestone. So whether it's the album you want to do, or whether it's connect with other people and go and climb Everest, or whether it's you want to get together a bunch of coaches and share your experiences, whether it's fulfilling on your potential, I, I implore you, this is a community that you can have that in an authentic way. Unlike anywhere I've seen. So if you're struggling with that, fine. Go away, have a look where else is out there. You're welcome to come back, do what you want. But this for me, this relationship, and I'm not pulling punches here, it's a dream come true. Yeah, I, yeah please. I, I normally have to give him a sandwich to sh shut him up. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, there he goes. Okay. So, so before we were referring to each other, it's not that, you know, I, I would see a client and within a couple of months in, I would say, look, you've got the, you know, you don't seem as passionate, you seem you've got concerns and I'd refer, refer them over to a business coach, or Erkan would see a client, and within a few months in, he'd say, look, you're not showing me figures, your figures are 12 months out of date, you've got no, you haven't got a handle on your financial position, so we'd still be doing that, but what Red Blue is, I think, is it will take us to a completely different proposition for clients, because it's, it's, it's coaching and finance intersecting at the same time and offering that uh, as, a, as a package to clients. You know, very different proposition. Are you excited? And they have to go together. Are you yeah, of course. Yeah. Would this ever happen well, if we ever got together? I don't I want to be a coach. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, um, any questions on that? Any, you know, to be honest, I know I can take over the scene, but I want, I, want, I want everybody here to get as much value from this concept of collaboration. That's why we're here, right? Is, and then thinking and locating people that can actually... I wouldn't have thought an accountant would be my access to my dream. Never. So if you're sitting here listening to this guy as an accountant, you'd miss all the... You know, was it um, Bruce Lee? Don't look at the tree, or you miss all the heavenly glory, right? Because that's the obvious bit. And, and you know the bit of the... the, 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 the oh, because I'm thinking... Oh, I'm, sorry, I'm really on the phone side, right? <laughs> But it's, it's finding those people who probably, like the other picture I showed earlier on uh, in the introduction with, uh, with Microsoft and Bill Gates. Imagine how much abundant talent there is around us that we miss every day. Great people with fantastic passions, great ideas that you may be one of those people that go unnoticed, never get to fulfill it. That is what we're incubating here, this human potential and connecting people and helping them. And we don't know how to do it. We don't know all of it. You know, we don't. But together, I bet we can work it out. So that's what I wanted to add to your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, any more questions for me or Ash? Just, uh, I was just saying, Ash is uh, my accountant now, and I've seen him change quite a bit of stuff the other day. You, you were like, what I didn't see. Yeah. Do you want to give people a little bit of per, per, per context, Ash? Do you want to start just tell us who you are? Why, yeah, why sorry, yeah, my name's Sash, I'm from Business Agent. I'm one of the original collaborators here. It was really interesting for me to see um, the Russian's presentation because there was three big things that I, I picked out of it, um, um, uh, and, and also teaming up with Erkan at the end. You know, the thing about context, you know, like fulfilling your dreams or your business or your everyday life in 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 what you believe in. You know, that's why everyone stood up at the beginning and said, you know, what's your passion? 
if you live from that, it's really, really important. It's really hard to forget it. When you're a business owner, you're getting battered down every day. You know, even in the business I'm at the moment, you know, and you, you forget, like, where was your context? You can go two years into your business and then go, hold on, why did I really start this? Um, and it, and it, it, it's really important. That's what we learn from the collaboration. And then, the, so you've got the context, then I picked up collaboration again. Um, and, and what I mean by collaboration was... So, I sure I come sorry, to was, 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 um, was fear. Um, so one of the things you said was fear. Yeah. So basically, uh, a, a big fear for accountants when you first started was, oh, well, accountants are going to take all my clients. I don't want to team up with other accountants because they're going to be better. Yeah. And I would actually say, probably, I, I mean, I don't know your term, but obviously I've, I've heard from other accountants it's actually increased quite a bit. Yeah. yeah? And that it's because that fear is gone. Yeah. yeah. And so the whole movement about B collaboration and what you've been trying to create and coming back to context is about not having fear about collaborating with people. You know? Um, and so that's their context. You've got to find your context and then overcome the fear. So that, that, was, that was a few things that I actually picked up from, from that and I thought it was really impressive. I was quite proud to say you were my accountant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Round of applause for fashion. and I are working towards supporting and empowering entrepreneurs. Why? Because so they can they can balloon, they can they can find who they are and express that. And then when you're doing that, things, you know, there's our natural our natural causes in nature that you know things like waterfalls work a certain way, flight works a certain way. And I think something about human beings, we say within this community, collaboration is a humanity express. It's when we're at our best. It's when we're at our best. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you all a chance to say something, not in front of the room, but with the person next to you, I'm going to give you five minutes, okay? Switch halfway or have a dialogue with the person next to you. What is opening up about collaborating, maybe around the context of the talk that the marriage just gave, around numbers, how different things link up. So with the person next to you, I'll give you, actually I'll give you a bit more than five minutes. Go and just go for it. Enjoy. Now, now, children, sit down. Okay. I was going to just let you talk and talk and talk, right? So that's great, fantastic. Right. Who wants to feedback what you what you got from what you're getting? Who wants to feedback? Got nothing to do with what we were talking about, though. Come in. Come in. All the way to front. You're rich small, aren't you? I'm going to see you from the way. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, everybody. My name is Nick Malcolmson. I'm a coach and positive psychologist. And one of the things I do is I help people stand in front of the room and enjoy it. Um, but I'm just talking with Janine. And I don't know your name. Yeah. Uh, just about their business. It's just really fascinating. So I know it's entirely unrelated, but I heard them talk about recycling tropical harbors. I thought, wow, that's interesting. And the only really interesting thing I heard is that tropical harbors can sit in the sea for like hundreds of years, and you can pull it out, and it's good with you, and you can take it somewhere and build something new out of it. I thought, that's really amazing and really cool. <laughs> that's what I wanted to share. Yay! 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 <laughs> Let's collaborate so we like herding cats, so I don't need to ask you. Okay, who else? Who else wants to just share what they're getting from the conversation? It's your chance to say something. You don't have to come to the front. Yeah. I promise you that I probably won't make you come to the front. Okay, if I'm going to go to the front, then I'll go. Stand up. Stand up on this. And we were just chatting about different ways. Mitch, just say who you are so people kind of get a sense of what you're about. I'm Mitch Herbert. I'm from Cafe Jimmy Solutions, a local artwork and print service. But we were just chatting about related services and how we could be accessing each other's client bases and working together either for profit or for giving the clients a service. 
the whole point is all about joining a group like this is about when you let other people access your client base, it's trust. Mm-hmm. If it goes wrong, it reflects badly on you. So you get to know people here, and then maybe you go to the go to Narish, for example, and say, Narish, look, I'd like to be the person offering your clients IT services or offering them print services. Uh, I'll make sure it's either this link for you or make sure your clients get a very beneficial rate and uh, will you trust me and promote, promote me and vice versa as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's all about collaborative working. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, you know you want to say no, something. No, I just, uh, just, just energy, I think. Just positive energy, really, really good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that's to make, to make everyone smile, so uh, that's probably what's coming off me while I'm... But yeah, really good energy. And um, like, you can feel the like-minded or light-heartedness. Um, yeah, because you've been smiling all the way through. Yeah, so I think, I think, I think that's the wine in your I'll tell you my secret later. Um, energy is is, um, is really an important part of it. I mean, I don't know. One, one of the things that we have done within BCOM is we're not out to prove a model. Okay, we're not out to say this is how you network or this is how you build relationships. We're not out to do all the how to. We will share some how to with different people. But one thing that we have brought is this notion of of energy. Imagine like your radio. What what frequencies are you tuning into? What kind of people do you want to connect with? <coughs> That's why the proposition here is one of, of uh, share and let people make themselves known. It's like, do you want to tune into our frequency? All we're doing, or help us improve it? Or is there somewhere else you need to be? So it really is an empowering context. It's about actually the energy that we bring together is really important. Um, there was no way I used to describe big collaboration a while back. We don't use it so much now. But anyone ever see the program that uh, Richard Hammond made a while back called How to Make, make a Planet? Okay, good, well, I'll tell you. So essentially, the way you make a planet <laughs> is you get, you get loads of dust, and dust clumps together and starts making rocks, and rocks start to come together, and you start to build some mass, right? And then you build up some more mass, and you build up some more mass, and you build up some more mass. And what mass does, it has gravity, right? And gravity starts to attract opportunities. And one of the things we found in, in uh, consultants and small businesses, they feel really atomized. They feel really like, like lone rangers. Yeah? They're lone rangers, they're out there trying to make it all happen. And who's this familiar for? Blogging, networking, social media going hing hing and going there and doing all these different things. And then you get a client, you've got to service the client. And while you're servicing the client, you've got to get another client. We're all familiar with all this, right? But how come our our gravitational pull, the community, start to pull opportunities in that we couldn't pull in on our own. How do we do that? So that's a really important part of the proposition here. And you can't do that on your own. You need mass. You need mass of other people around you pulling in those opportunities. And if you speak to me and Jill, we're having all sorts of interesting opportunities coming our way. At the beginning, we had some massive ones that we just weren't ready for. So we kind of learned what there was to learn. But now we're getting more opportunities and more fit with what we're about. So we need team players, not need. Wrong word. We want to attract team players that feel this opportunity for them. Yeah? So this is a form of natural energy. So we're working with natural energy, not working against it. We're not trying to get people to do things, but actually share what we're about and let people turn up in that space. A bit like Glenn's example. No introduction, no nothing. I think you heard about it from Dave Cordell. Phoned up, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a part of history now. He's the first person <laughs> that joined Big Cabaret Show with a phone without an introduction. And he chose it. We didn't talk him into it. Uh, does, that, does that make sense, Glenn? That energy is, 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 uh, is something we can work on. We work on that. Uh, Paul, did you want to add something? Oh, you forgot me. Come, come to the front. Paul Marley, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, I'm Paul Marley. Uh, I'm the intuitive consultant stroke coach. Big coach intuitive. Um, just been talking to Claudia. Claudia's just joined the collaboration. About four months ago. Four months. I met Claudia about four or five months ago. And we, we were just talking that um, the people who seem to be in this room there's something else going on. So, 
it's almost like a feeling that you know we're, we're all here. It's not here about what we want to take. It's about what we want to contribute. And I think everybody in this room, you know, this is just our conversation. It might not be a true conversation, <laughs> but in our conversation, we, we just feel that everybody here is is really here about contributing. And it's funny you were talking about the energy because it sort of led on to this. So, so it, it's you know, it's it's just I will be joining. Um, Group, and okay. um, he knows I'm very resistant. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but what a great group of people. I'd be good. Um, but yeah, so so what I've got out of the collaboration just in, in these last couple of sort of hours is, is that everything I'm hearing is is not the me show, but it's about what what we're giving back. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, anyone else want to share before we move on? Yeah, just like that, that's opening up for me. Yeah, but no, but. Please, Steve. Yeah, uh, Steve says that I'm a financial planner. I was, we were talking to Simon and we were talking about rejecting a potential client. Um, and the fact that you have a, like an introduction meeting, say, for half an hour. And if it's somebody you, you think you'd never ever want to work with, you tell them at the beginning of half because you know if you take them on, they're going to be more grief than, <laughs> than, than they're worth. You know? so, it's, so the collaboration thing is going to be a good way to end the <coughs> whoever we work with. So it's going to be a natural fit, yeah, like a natural alignment. But there's no other word I use. And again, I, this, I'm not, I'm not helping on the language, but it does explain something. You've got alignment with people, there's a natural flow. And we've all worked with people that you just, they, you know, clearly try and make it work. And, and what does it end up? Like a car crash, right? But there's other people, you just, kind of, I mean, Jill's talks about click as well. But this click, when you put people together that click, things just start to happen at a rate you couldn't do otherwise. So it's actually a, a way of accelerating value. I mean, one of the things I say about my, my relationship with Narish, and I promise you, I don't think we've ever had a crossword. We've never, I'm not saying we agree about everything, it's all like, but we challenge each other's thinking. But it's all in alignment with what the outcome we want to produce. And that's really powerful. It's working out how those relationships can flow. Because you met with the finance team today, didn't you? Yeah. 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 I think we're going to get a bit of feedback on that later, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're going to break in about 10 minutes. Um, anyone else want to contribute something or ask something or something you've noticed? David, please. Just one thing. I, you know, I haven't been around BCOR for a while. I'm a lot of sense, huh? Um, that drawing on there about yeah. you know, like the planets and everything. It is hard when you're a small business and you work on your own. And you know, with the, the theory that small businesses will oh, I stay here. You know, with the theory that small businesses are gonna grow, um, we need the collaboration. You need the you need group thinking and you need that offload. And I I really like that little drawing you've done there. You know, how it brings everyone together. Um, I think I'm losing what I was going to say now, but that just that very fact that there's small groups of people, independent workers within their own realm, reliable, trustworthy, and you can share that knowledge and share, you know, just a, a job together is fantastic. I see it. You know, I see it as the way forward. You know, Sarah called us all ducks. Sparkling on a bigger bit of dust than that. You're a rock from the neck up, bud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're magic dust. That's what we are. You just love magic dust. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know this this notion of atomization. I mean, that's why networking groups work. You know, that's why you know business networking. Groups, I mean, I, I imagine back in the old seventies and eighties when B and I got kicking off. Where did you go and meet other people? There's no internet. There's no social media. And I imagine the professions weren't very good at connecting with each other because professionalism does sort of make a, a demarcation between groups. Um, and I think, I, mean, I think where we are is an evolution, an evolutionary step up in, in thinking. That's where we're at. It's like, and using technology. Using te I, mean, I mean, that's why we've, we've started off building the communities before we built the platform. Because we want to build on grounded, trusted, tested and trusted methodology. That's why the orientations are really important because I've had people <coughs> sit the orientations and go, I still don't get it, but I love it. I'm like, really? That's fine, enjoy it. <laughs> you know, you'll, you'll get it at the level you need to get it. So it's, it's, it's raising your understanding. We're not doing it to you. You're taking what you need from it. 
That's important. We honor that. We honor that. So anyone else? Observation? Question? So if you're thinking of a question and you're just not asking it, anyone in that position, don't put your hand up. But if you're thinking of a question and you're not asking it, I want you to ask yourself this. What is it that would have me not ask that question? What is it? Is it fear of being looking, you know, the obvious one, looking silly or stupid, you know, the old, there's never a stupid question? Is it you're worried about what people think of you or what the answer is? What if you already know the answer and you ain't going to ask the question? How many people ask questions they already know the answer to? <laughs> or let me ask you a question and tell you the answer, that's my idea. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where, in this community, those things are noticed. Where you don't normally take that action. Think of yourself in terms of ways of being. And those ways of being have limits. Even asking a question in front of a group may be something you don't feel comfortable doing. Right? And I wonder if that was something that you overcome today, imagine what the next limit would be. Maybe getting up in front of people and talking. And then say you did that, what would the next limit be? So inside of this conversation, any limiting behaviour, thought process, fixed way of acting or behaving, consider it as something that's held you in that position. That if you just overstepped it and took an action now where you don't normally, see some of you not only are happy to ask questions but want to get the limelight and just sitting back and listening would be the breakthrough. Some of you feel very comfortable getting in front of the room and saying stuff. Some of you are, you know what, I'm glad they're here so I don't have to really say anything. That's an opportunity. It's an invite. So who would like to ask a question that hasn't said anything publicly yet? And I'll be gentle, I promise. I know there's a few in the room. Okay, I do want to talk to you about the uh, form in the digital group. So I'd like to know that this is the right forum for it at the moment. I think we're going to present the opportunity, aren't we, later, aren't we? The digital team? Uh, no. We're not doing that not, today? Not yet, no, until I've spoken to someone. No. Oh, okay, fine. I will do, I'll talk to you. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. So, sometimes there's a concern that we have before we open our mouth. That's always there. It keeps us in a certain way. And this is, a, this is a safe space to explore, to try things you wouldn't normally try anywhere else. Okay, so I'll put that there. So before we move on, anyone else want to ask a question they haven't asked yet? Are you behaving that? I'm behaving that. Sorry, I've got a question, good question, but I'm on the line. Don't go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you want to ask a question about that? I don't want the limelight. <laughs> Why don't um, you ask Sarah to ask the question? I do. She don't want the limelight either. <laughs> right, the question is, how do we, how do we work to overcome fear? And um, it relates to something I asked you at the orientation. Of how do, so let me get the question, how do we, yeah. how do we, overcome fear. how do we overcome fear? Yeah, or work towards overcoming fear. Yeah, I know it's going to stump him. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not stumping me at all. I've got a, a ready-made answer, but I'm checking in if there's something else I could add to get some value, right? So for me, I mean, fear is an indication of limit. Because you do things every day that a few years ago may have been a stretch. We climatise. So things that you do today, probably a while back, may have been risky. So I don't think it's about making fear go away, because then I think that would be a life of comfort and static stagnation or shrinking, I think. But when you're putting yourself in a position where you force yourself to grow, or you put yourself in an environment where you get pushed outside your comfort zone, then fear is actually a good thing. It's a driver. Yeah. 
So driver, it's actually an indicator. Yeah, so, sorry, just to go on from that. Sorry, so I, I I don't enjoy car calling, but I know it's a, it's a way to way to an end. So for me, I actually get in. I do it two days a week. I do it from ten to eleven. I'm scared before I start it, and always, I'm quite always, happy. Oh, oh, always, every single time, every right. single time. But what, when I get to the end, whether I've got yeses or nos, I've done what I needed to do. I've gone through the scared barrier, and I've, I've carried on doing it. So hopefully, in answer to your question, for me. For me, the best way, just do it. Just do it. But what's the worst thing that's going to happen? I've been told to sod off so many different ways. I've been married for 27 years. <laughs> yeah? So I, I'm a true believer that if you have got a, a fear or a barrier, you just go for it. And, I think, I think and it is hard. It's I hard. Think, <laughs> I think, Neil, to, to, to accentuate on that, is I think fear is a good indication that you're stretching yourself. Are we not talking about getting attacked by some of the night fear. <laughs> you know, we're not talking about that kind of I'm talking about you up in your ante, taking your game to another level, the fear of connecting with other people and trusting someone with your database. How many people and businesses do I hear about protecting their database? Like, <laughs> I just, like it makes me laugh because I could come and get your database tomorrow and I could do nothing with those people because I have a relationship with them. People can buy your data like that. You can download data for free. Yeah. That takes nuts, and so does Sasha does as well, by the way. And I do, is I do it. I go out and I walk the street and I go and knock on doors. To this day I do it. Why? It scares the hell out of me and something always great usually it's actually happens. actually a buzz, actually. It is a buzz. Yeah. yeah, but I think you need to ask yourself, first of all, where does the fear come from? I don't think that was the question he asked me, though. But no, yeah. no, she yeah. asked, how do you overcome fear? But where's the fear coming from in the first place in order to know where, how to overcome it? Fear is just a thought. Why are you having those thoughts? It's from old programming. It's old data. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? We'll give everyone two minutes each way, right? Two minutes each way before we finish off, because we are, we're, I'm just filling in the... Two minutes each way of something that puts the bejeebas up you or scares you or something you'd love to do that you've been thinking about doing for a while, share with the person next to you, one, what it might be, what it is, right, or the action you're going to take this week out of this conversation. Well, you know what? I, think I could go and do that. Whether it's apply for a new job, go and knock on a new client's door, ask for a pay rise, ask for a referral. How many people ask for referrals? You should be ending one. Come on, guys. <laughs> right? So think of something that would really be of value to you that if you took on out of this conversation, Today's job has already been done, we're only halfway through. So, two minutes each way, go. Go. <laughs> what are you going to take on this week that will be a breakthrough? Andrew. Massive breakthrough. Um, I've been saying there, but I've been faffing around for the last few months. I've been saying, what am I going to do? Am I going to carry on this lifestyle business I've got? Or am I going to take it to the next level? And I've made a decision in the last hour. Mm. I listen to Naresh, this chap here. Mm. I'm going to push it to the next level. Mm -hmm. So I'll be talking to you about something about that very soon. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right, who else? Not that one. Oh, <laughs> that one. <laughs> Matthew. I'm going to say no. Yes! Yay! 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 Fear of achieving and being successful. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, I sort of know that I've been putting lots of things off oh, yeah. and sort of really trying to break those boundaries and similar to you saying, kind of yes. taking things forward. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah. That's brilliant. Okay, who else? Who else wants one? What's a breakthrough before they go home? Breakthroughs. <laughs> Ten first dozen. Or whatever. <laughs> Come on. Who else? One more, then we're going to finish off. Jazz, please. Fear of failure as well. Yeah. Mm. Failure not succeeding, see other people look at me and thinking, for example, I'm playing golf, I was trying to play golf, I play with people and I'm scared, what are they going to say, I can't hit it straight, but I went to a, a coach, a golf coach, he, looked, he said to me, just hit the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> what's the worst you're going you to do, you're going to lose the ball. Yeah. yeah. That's that's that actually helps you. Yeah. So what action can you take this week, coming yeah. week? Just let go. Of it. Just to let go. That'd be a big yeah. that'd be yeah. Yeah. Just to let go. Just <laughs> fearless. Wow. Be fearless. fearless. Brilliant. Okay, guys. So thank you very much. Fantastic session. Thank you. So, we're going to stop for a break.
Um, we've got seasoned coffees. There's, if you want to get sandwich, no, we don't encourage drinking during collaborate meetings. It's our food. I want to thank you for your participation. I want to thank Narish. Yeah. Fantastic. Should we acknowledge Narish for that? Um, so you can be back in your seats for five to five, please. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. This is the time, as you can see, um, anyone can be cool but awesome in a And I'm just here to tell you all that you are all <coughs> That is your standard you have to live up to in B Collaboration. We will accept nothing less than cool. What's been happening in the world of B Collaboration since we last met you? So I've asked, I've earmarked, twisted arms for different people to come up and talk about what's been happening. But before that, I would like to invite one of our guests up. Um, I met her about a month ago at an event that Nikki Sassen has published, published to everybody. Um, what's it on? Oh, more to life, life. Uh, which is why Alan Brown isn't here today, because he's um, doing the More to Life weekend with Nikki Sassen. Um, and Claire has come because she was part of the introduction evening, and she's got a little something she wanted, uh, she requested, um, would it be possible to share? So I've given her three minutes of that time. Professionalism. 
So my um, ask today really is whether you would wish to be aligned with a project. Um, we have a very prestigious event happening, the prize giving for all the people, all the poetry and artwork winners at the House of Lords on the 24th of June. Um, and if we're looking for somebody who'd like to align with that and have their company as quite a high profile um, partner of it. And also there's other opportunities through music. We have an EP that we're creating through the poems. We get lyrics. Through the artwork, we get covers of the EP and singles. There's lots going on. If you feel that you'd like to creatively support positive mental health and um, you feel aligned with this project and it talks to you on any level, um, I would love to hear from you. And uh, thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much for your time. And that's me. Thank, thank you. So much. you.
and the next one is on the 10th of June. So as uh, Glenn's saying, everyone is slightly different. So if you haven't been for two or three months, then you're more than welcome to come along to meet new people and meet new collaborators. Um, and obviously we are now meeting at Handel Bank and uh, Debbie Chilton lets us use her committee room, which is fantastic. Um, it's a very cozy environment. Um, so just let me know if you're coming in. There is a sign on page on the website. Um, you can register there, but or just drop me a line and let us know that you're coming.
can't be bothered to organise it. We've got to do it for you. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a busy woman. So, like, yeah. Just try to make it easy for, for all of us to make these things happen. And if you see a comment like, yeah, or like something it. on the Facebook page, please respond. Everybody respond. There's no, nothing worse than just getting two I know. Responses. Thank you. Um, yeah, seriously. Yes or no? I, I mean, it takes two seconds to like. <laughs> and please, if I ask a question, come back to me. Yeah.
positive feedback we had on, on Facebook and the great enthusiasm from Claudia and Farm saying, yeah, we like this. Well, I think we all do like it, and um, I just see this as part of the evolution. But I don't want, I'm happy to sort of put my hand up and say, I'll coordinate it and make it happen, but I don't want it to be a Simon Thomas delivery. I want it to be a big collaborating delivery. And so I'm really sort of casting my breath upon the water and saying, where do we take this opportunity, guys? So that's completely where I'm at. Brilliant, thank you. So if you know anybody that can help Simon in this, even if you are not a digital person but it interests you and you go, well, do you know what, I'm, I'll help you any way I can, or you know somebody who's a bit of a whiz that might be interested to come along to the collaboration. Um, we've got a few people within the community already, uh, Paula and Daryl, the other ones that yeah. we haven't uh, contemplated, but if we have a, um, a product within the digital team that we can then offer out to our accountants and to our coaches and to our you know, banks with their clients, whatever else we can put together, it's gonna be quite powerful. Um, back in January, one of our collaborators, Hat, told us about so many new innovations that are going on. Um, and on one hand, people are going, Ugh. and the other hand, people are going, yes, bring it on. And we need to be at the cutting edge of the digital world. Yeah. And Simon is ready to head up that team. So let's jump on and let's help him in any way you can. So if you know somebody that might be interested in joining him, if you yourself would like to get involved, um, take his card at the end of the day. That's probably the quickest way to do it. And they're going to set up a meeting, the very first meeting, very early stages. Um, at the moment we've got two accountants, myself and Jazz, and funny how we, we're totally like on the same page. Uh, and also Steve, um, investments and pensions. Uh, and of course, Debbie. Um, so, uh, that's okay, no, no. Um, and uh, it's very early stages, but you know, it's about building um, a finance group that can really help people with understanding um, things, educating them, you know, it's not about us getting clients, it's nothing to do with that, it's about how do we educate people and get them um, to a different level and hopefully things will come from that. Yeah. Look forward to that, thank you very much. Okay, and finally I'd just like to let you know, uh, if you haven't heard on the grapevine already, that the collaboration in September is going to be having a London meeting, as well as this one. So if you can't, for whatever reason, make this meeting, you can get to the one in London, which will always be the last Tuesday of the month. And it's going to be at St Paul's at a place called Happenstance. So the one in September is the 29th of September. Um, and a lot of the people that come from the south of the river, and some people come even further than the south of the river, um, that might be easier for you guys to get to. Now, we're not fussed which one you go to. If you want to go to both, that's awesome. Or if you want to just make one your home, that's fine. Um, but what we'll find is probably come September, this group might get slightly reduced and we'll have a, a group in London as well. But that's just a heads up. You'll be getting more information coming through in the coming weeks anyway. So if you know somebody who's living in the South that can't come to this meeting because they go, oh, this is too small, then you can tell them about that one. The information is on the website, so if people want to book in, they can. It's already on there. Okay. That is so advanced for us. <laughs> 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 Have you thought much about how high a profile you get with, with the media, for example? Do you promote collaborative working with the media? Have you thought about it? Not yet. Would it be of interest? Possibly, yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I, I mean, at the moment, all, all we've been doing is personal invitation yeah. because we need to know that people are ready to understand this conversation. We haven't so got a PR agency in the group, though, have we? Well, they didn't know what they asked, didn't they? <laughs> uh -huh. Maybe. But yeah, you're right, PR would be good. Um, I've been invited, now we're in London, once we go in September in London, I'll be able to get a PR agency of Alison to come along. I'd invite mine as yeah. well to Brilliant. the London one. Absolutely. So if you know people already that you think might enjoy coming to London, then invite them to that 29th of September, so it'll be good to have a, a nice big party. <coughs> okay, I think I've picked everybody off. Is there anybody I've asked to speak and I haven't actually asked you to say anything? Have I, have I done everybody? Okay, this is the slot that we've seen, we've already seen some of these seniors today, um, but we're going to get a little bit more. Um, the power of getting to know one another is so immense, eclipsed only by first getting to know ourselves. So Erkan is going to help us get to know ourselves a little bit. Oh, thank you very much, sir.
Can we rattle for children? <laughs> We are happy clappers. <laughs> the thing with clapping, it raises your energy, it acknowledges people's contribution, and it's fun. Right? It's like drinking fizzy water. Um, so who was here last month when I did the one with Osho and everyone's going about it, yeah? I haven't got anything that wild this week, but um, this month. But um, Jill, uh, Jill challenges me to do to provide something that is of value to our community that we take away. So where some I suppose guests might be thinking about this and new collaborators is like it, it isn't a business networking group. I think we've established that it's something very different and it's and it's taking shape. But also anything that you take from here and go and apply it. Go and make it work somewhere else. Make it pay. Make it develop your relationships. Make it help you connect with others outside this community. It isn't all about what goes down here. It, we don't, it, it's, I think we just had this conversation at the orientation last week. If we have this orientation, we'll get this sense of how connected we are, how amazing we are as human beings, and go out in the road and drive and cut people up in traffic and swear at people. It's kind of like, this, this isn't a conversation just for when you're here. It's take the stuff, use it, test it. If it works, thumbs up, let us know. If you can't get it to work, call us, share, ask, say, I heard something about the last collaborators meeting, I tried to apply it, I didn't get anywhere. Who's having success with that principle? So we're, we're learning off each other. Some of us are a bit ahead, some of us are a little bit behind, some of us feel like not even in the race. What happened? The gun went off and they all went off, right? So this is the spirit of today. And I've been thinking about, uh, all my experience, how can I draw on all this experience and bring something to the table that will not only make an impact here today, but something you will take away and apply. Yeah? Got that? Are you up for that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, really? You sure? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can knock off now, you can head off to the bar. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the things I've been looking at, well, Within being inspired, we do talk, of, and this is not being inspired conversation, but in being inspired, the subject matter and the context for the, for the day is an awakening to one's genius. And then defining that in some kind of broad statement to the, in terms of our be, do, have, in terms of a statement that can be live with. And I, you know, uh, Scott said, I make a difference. It's not a discussion. That's who I am. I think you were asking about how can I get you to your genius or some kind of question like that. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the way I dealt with that question? Uh, yeah. It was really straight and it was like a death penalty. Mm -hmm. So our, our words have power. Think of your words as, as something that you drop into the future or comes from the future and what you say becomes your reality. Most of the time that is unchecked. During, by unchecked. We say stuff verbally or in our heads and it goes unchecked. Whether it's empowering, disempowering or maybe has no effect one way or the other. But by choosing empowering language and repeating that language, you see it in many different forms. You can have it in songs, you can have it in mantras, you can have it in um, war cries like haka. You know, I don't know who that is. Right? <laughs> <laughs> language is something. Hey? <laughs> language is a very unique phenomenon that only human beings have on this planet. And our language enables us to make things happen into the future that no other species has. But we don't relate to it that way. We don't relate to it as the, 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 uh, the abundant solution or source of genius for human experience. Because most of the time we do not monitor it and we do not create it. It just comes out and you ask yourself, where did that come from? A bit like the question Claudia asked earlier on. Do you know what she said? You might want to ask, where did that fear come from? I was at a, a masculinity conference last week, a couple of weeks ago, and someone I was interested myself, so I said, hi, my name's Eric. Oh, I can't say that name. <laughs> what? <laughs> I said, it's er, uh, can. He went, er, uh, can. I go, er, uh, can. Er, uh, can. He's gone, er, uh, can. I go, there you go. But the first thing he said is, I can't possibly say that. And like within two minutes, I went, yeah, you can. There you go, done. Okay. And I want you to consider, as a community, as we start to hear things that each other says and how we interact with each other, is to catch each other out. 
to, to say, hold on a minute, you just said you need. What is need? Is need the language of abundance or is it the language of scarcity? I'm not saying what it is or it isn't, but ask yourself. Is that an <coughs> empowering term or is that a disempowering term? And us coaches know this very well. Most of the time we're dealing with is language. Yeah? How do we take language and then turn it into something that creates a world? A world that inspires me, inspires Nash. Every person seen here is because some lone nut five years ago started sprouting his mouth off about how we could build a community and make a difference. That's me, by the way. It was just talking. It was just talking. Now, people say talk is cheap, but we cheapen talk. We cheapen talk. So what goes on down here, there's a Johnny Cash song, it all goes down in your mind. It all goes down on here, right? So I'm going to talk to you about a phenomenon called gossip. Who are the gossipers? Put your hands up. Okay, I'm not any gossipers, they're liars. Thank you, thank you, Adrian, for making that clear. And gossip will rot an organisation, a business, a family will rot it out quicker than you can count to three. Mm -hmm. Who said tell me about it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's horrendous. And the other thing about gossip is, have you ever met people on holiday? Or you meet someone new, and aren't they fantastic? I, mean, I think you said something about let's all get drunk together or something, but I don't think you want to do it in this fashion, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I said I have a glass of wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah a bottle of wine. Of wine. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, what, what we do as human beings, we take information, fact, and then we add some interpretation to it. You know, someone may say, oh, that John Wallace is a nice guy. Oh, really? Do you really think so? You go, oh, what was that day? Well, he touched my bottom the other day. Someone just feels that. <laughs> you can touch it later, baby. I did that one day. <laughs> So I want you to consider, when we meet a brand new human being, we take them on face value, and anything is possible. Then what happens? We learn something new about them, we learn something new about them, at some point there's a fall in grace. We do it all the time. How many people have got people they love, they would have gone to battle with, they would have gone to the moon with, that they no longer talk to today? Hands up. Something happened. Maybe it was repetitive over a period of time, and at some point it was like, this is untenable. Yeah? Right? Now, one of the things that I'm really passionate about is how do we keep the space clean? I don't know Neil from Adam, but between me and him right now, anything's possible. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'll come with you on that walkabout next time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's possible, right? It's possible. There's, uh, you know, we've been inspired. We talk about us as children. There you go, there's me. Aww, Gorgeous, huh? <laughs> but imagine, I think I did this to Andrew in the first being inspired. Imagine if we treated every human being like we treat a five year old child. Hello, how are you? You're so gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the park. <laughs> but we don't. <laughs> but yeah, come with me, I've got puppies at home. <laughs> so be careful if you start doing this to five year olds, right? But the point, yeah, the point I'm making. As we get older, we start to fix certain behavioural patterns. We start to behave about people in a way that starts to, to limit who they are. Mm. People will say things, oh, well, that Mitch is like, he's like this or he's like that. And then someone else will agree. Empowering, disempowering. How do we keep the space that we're creating here? And, and I suppose the thing that is very hard to articulate for people that come for the first time, or people that heard about B Collaboration, how do you explain it? It really is the space of connection, of abundance, of supporting, developing friendships. About to keep that alive for us, we've got to clean up as we go. We have to clean up as we go. Otherwise, we just end up with ordinary, deflated, predictable, flat line relationships. And as human beings and as adults, we have some great relationships, and we have some flat relationships, and then there's those we don't even want to talk about anymore. How many people have given up on people you wouldn't care if you ever saw them again? Interesting, how many of those people are family? 
<laughs> yeah. So if we could turn our back on family, do you think I could turn my back on Mark or he could turn his back on me? Sure, just like that. So as a community, I want to hold a responsibility that we take on a no tolerance of gossip policy. No tolerance. Right? So what I did is I, I, I actually drew on a document I wrote a few years ago. I've done this for businesses and organisations before, but how do we develop a gossip policy that empowers us? That doesn't make you feel restricted, because at some point I probably will have a complaint about John, and he'll have a complaint about me, and at some point we've got to deal with it. So having complaints is not a problem. Scott, Claudia, Jill, Sasha. Having a problem or a challenge or an issue with someone is not the problem. What do we know about when we have an issue with someone? What do we do? No, I'm not saying what do we do. What do people do that doesn't work? Different question. Give me some ideas. One could avoid talking to them and talk to everybody else. Yeah, that Nick Malcolmson. Hey, you're supposed to. No, he didn't. Because we're talking about trust, right? We're talking about open, crazy stuff like this. Open our databases up and let everyone in, right? Outside there, that's crazy talk. In here, you go, that's a good idea. Why? Because we're creating a space of trust. So we have to honour that trust. We have to respect that trust. If I want to bring Glenn in on a project with me, I would expect certain things. That he turns up on time, he's prepared, that we briefed each other beforehand. Maybe he'll say, okay, then I want to add this caveat. So we've got a good understanding of how we're going to make that happen. And then when he doesn't do what he said he'd do, or I didn't do what I said we'd do, then what? Because we're human, right? Mm -hmm. We talk. We talk. Make sense? I'm telling you off, guys. I'm being a stand for this work. So I'm going to hand out this, uh, this document. Take one and pass it on. And then we'll, uh, we'll read it through as a group. And by the way, I'm not telling you these are not rules. These are <laughs> recommendations that I would like everyone to get on board with. But most importantly, if we can improve it, we improve it. Would anyone like to read it for us? Yeah, Nick, you want to come to the front? Uh, who else would like to read it? Anyone got a copy? Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. But who else would like to read part of it? Anyone else want to read it? A new collaborators? <laughs> okay. Far, far away, Nick. The collaboration gossip policy. Definition of gossip. Damaging or destructive communications that has no constructive purpose or any communication that is disrespectful to one or more of the collaborative community members. Gossip destroys a business, enterprise, or family quicker than any other form of activity. It is not, it is rot, plain and simple. Gossip has no place in a thriving, up and coming organisation that is on the move. Anyone want to read policy? He's doing a great job, thanks very much. Okay, policy. If you have a complaint or issue, take committed steps to resolve such complaints by speaking with the person that can do something about that complaint. If it is unclear who that person is, refer all issues to Jill Simon. Heads of membership. If a member of B Collaboration approaches you with an issue or complaint that you are unable to help them with, refer them onto the person that can do something about it. If a member of B Collaboration talks about another member in such a way that would be inappropriate in the presence of that member, respect respectfully refuse to accept or entertain such a conversation and such communication. Then refer them to someone one that can help them with that complaint. Please note, this policy has been designed to empower all members and to support our collaborative community to thrive. We are committed to extraordinary results and request your support and cooperation in this area. Thanking you in advance for your contribution. Thank you. Can we put back the next day? So, yeah. any reactions to that? Document, uh, apart from the title. Sorry. Really refreshing to see an organisation actually doing something about this. Well done. Yeah. 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 Ye
and then uh, just tell us what, what the takeaway is, keep it concise so we can get as many people up and get the momentum going. So who'd like to go first? Please, Neil. Okay, well, Thank morning. You. Thank uh, you very morning. much. Morning. Oh, <laughs> 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 you can tell I'm not being an idiot. Just trying to live in this room. Good afternoon. My name is Neil Giller. I, I have a terminology in life, it's about being a radiator or a drain. And I felt that there are no drains in the room today. Wow. So, oh, thank you very much. Good knowledge, Fantastic. Next, please. Come on. I'll go one. Please, okay. John. Okay. Um, on, on fear, I'll just say that one thing I've learned very much so this last week or so is go to be getting instincts. Um, and um, I've got my daughter back. Oh. <laughs> I was saying earlier that I'd made a decision to take my business to the next level. The biggest takeaway for me today is all the help I need is in this community. Every answer to every question I'll have is in this community. That's a big takeaway. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for listening to me droning on earlier. Oh, you're um, not on. But um, <laughs> the thing about fear is, you know, if you come from your vision about wanting to do stuff for people, I think that really overcomes the fear. And I could never have stood up and talked to loads of people before, so it, it was really good for me. And there's something from uh, Tony Robbins, I remember. I don't know how many of you know about Tony Robbins. Um, and he says, you know, do I have to do that? And it's like, no, I get to do that. And I'm so happy that I could have, I could uh, speak to oh, him. Oh, so, thank yeah. you. David, who's after David? Come on, give one a chance. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Elizabeth, right, great. I, uh, potentially, you know, to follow the rest. And the rest of something he's, he's taught me is that great businesses are defined by the mindset of their owner. And you know, that's a nugget, isn't it? Mm. And it is, it's true. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Elizabeth, please. Well, she's lifted me up to five foot eleven, so I might as well lift you. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's still up there. <laughs> Chilly. <laughs> um, I'm a visitor today, and I'm very glad to be here. And all I will say that there's not so much like a you know thought or question, but more the feeling and everything that I've heard today. It is as much about personal growth and something that is relevant to you as you as it is to business direction and getting out there. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So we've got four or five minutes left. Come on. Yes, please, Scott. Well, first of all, uh, who's been to the Be Inspired Program? The ones that ever put your hand up, shame on you. Because it's just... <laughs> Can I just say, before, well, no, because a lot of this stuff got to me as far as I was going to be inspired, which we did, seems like last time, yeah, we uh, yeah. um, the one thing, I know there's a lot of people I spoke to in the big collaboration sort of say, I've joined, but I didn't get it, mm-hmm. you hear that a lot, for me, the organisation did a lot of that, but the Be Inspired programme really, mm-hmm. and I think, um, I was talking about Sandy, but everyone should be able to go on it, but my big takeaway today actually is just, um, okay, it could be different, you know, and, uh, and I think the difference for me is, the reason why I feel quite comfortable in the room and love and trust every one of you in the room is the fact that we're different than a lot of people out there, but the more people in this room and get in this room or get in the group, the better the world's going to be. And every accountant who's like now that's in jazz, then uh, the world will be a better place, isn't it? So that's yeah. my take away. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If you want to organise it, Rich, then... <laughs> 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 
Facebook group. That's the easy way to get hold of yeah. people. Uh, yeah. If there's anyone in particular you wanted to today, nine times out of ten, because you all come from such a long way, just say, should we meet at one o'clock here? And then have your one-to-one. -one. Yeah, I'm of sure you do the one-to-one, -one, you don't know whether it's worth doing a one-to-one -one sometimes, either. And I'm assuming everybody's here for the same feeling and reason. So, yeah. Uh, I think, I think it, what happens at, uh, in other networking groups is you know they, they say, have you had your one-to-ones? -one? It's just a reminder as part of the agenda, I suppose. I think that might be an idea. How do you suppose the lights are going to actually know what they're all about? I mean, there's yeah. ways, there's ways. I mean, I mean, obviously, when someone gets, when, I mean, teach you to suck eggs, guys, but if someone gets something they inspire you, that's a good idea. Go and find out more about them. It doesn't, you don't have to have a mo motive up front. You know, you don't have to have a mate, well, I'm looking for a counter, oh yeah, there's one there, there's one there, I'll go and talk to them. Which is what we've been trained to do. But what about if someone gets up and you go, oh, I really like what they said, I want to go find out more about them. And he happens to sell, be a sales trainer, but he's a musician, he's a father, he's a cool dude, you know? I mean, you can't waste that kind of intention. Well, it's down to fear. Can you, you lot have got a fear. Can you set up that for you, special? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Honestly, couple more. Who, who else wants to say something? Who else if they can't have said something would be a breakthrough? Who wants to have a breakthrough before they go home? Oh, me, okay. Go on, Angela. Oh, come no, on. No, come no, to no. the front, Angela. Oh, no. Come on, guys. Oh. website is our little explainer video that is uh, the work that Angela did for B collaboration we've been working on that so I'm um, happy to tell stories in beautiful graphic ways is uh, something that Angela's really great at. I've just done a couple of bits as well. Um, Scott do you want to talk to us very briefly about your uh, event in September? Do you want to share that now? I know you've put it up on Facebook. Yeah I, yeah, I can do it. Yeah, yeah people are, well actually just about if anyone wants to get involved in it. So, um,
and some of the books that point to what we are doing. These books, I would suggest you take the name and you go off to Amazon or wherever and buy them because they are really backing up what we are trying to achieve. This is a small scale here, but we are global in our thinking, and these guys sound it out as well. Okay, so to, to wrap up the day, I mean, I think we always look forward to these, these days, and this one came around quite slowly for me this time, usually they come really quick. Um, what I'd like to do is, is, like I said, take the value from today, and the conversations and the connections, and, you know, you know, make them have value for you. Um, we're going to go, we're going to adjourn to the bar. Um, that's where we get to make friends and find out about our favourite colours and how many kids we've got and all those nice stories that we've got. So uh, on behalf of myself and Jill and the community, we want to thank you for being here. Namaste, a wonderful evening. Next meeting is? 26th of June. 26th of June here. Okay? Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.